Turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 5. I'm going to do a real quick video here on the subject of who it is that opens the seals. Um, and their mad uh, attempt to discredit the rapture being before, or the catching away being before the time of Jacob's trouble, um, pre-trib rapture as it's called by many. Um, the posties, those that believe that Christians, the body of Christ goes into any part of the time of Jacob's trouble, you, whether you get full post-trib rapture that at you know the whole way towards the end of Revelation 19 is when the body of Christ goes up and then comes right back down again, or you get the post-trib mid-wrath or whatever else that that's, tries to make it in the midway or something like this. Anybody that teaches you go into any thing there, um, they have to eliminate, well, the, the postie, you know, the, the full post-tribber, um, they don't eliminate the thing of Christians going through the, the wrath of God. They just stumble all over the passages that say we're not appointed to wrath. Um, they just pretend that doesn't exist or that we'll be somehow protected in the time of God's wrath being poured out. But the you know, pre, post-trib, pre-wrath, wing nuts, um, Marvin Rosenthal and then Anderson and all his little satanic little girlfriends that he, you know, branched off of him. Um, they're in their desire to prove their system. They have to eliminate wrath from the first part of the time of Jacob's trouble. Because if it's wrath, if it's God who's behind these judgments that are happening, then how could a Christian go into a time when they have God's wrath? We're not appointed to wrath. So, hmm. So what these people are starting to do, and you're going to run into this if you get into the debate with them. That's why I'm doing this little video here so you can have the ammunition to fight back against this heresy. What they're trying to do is they're trying to say that um, the opening of the seals is not the Lord himself doing these things. It's just he's kind of opening the seal and kind of peeking into the earth to see what's happening. You know, <laughs> like God's this little, you know, little boy up in heaven and he's just, you know, peeking over the clouds, looking down and saying, oh, did you see that? Oh, that's bad. <laughs> Weird God that they worship. Thankfully, not the one that I worship. But let's read here. Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Why? You know, what's the deal with there being man in heaven? No man in heaven. Hmm. Well, they say, well, that's the souls of those, the saints that have died. It doesn't say souls, it says man. Just like the 24 elders. They'll try to confuse you on that point, too. They'll say, well, that, that's the souls of saints. That are, it doesn't say souls. They'll compare. They say, well, the, the 24 elders are wearing white robes. And see, over in Revelation 6, the souls that are under the altar, at the opening of the fifth seal, I think it is, um, those souls that are under the altar, you see, they're given white robes. So the, the 24 elders with, with white robes are the same as the souls with white robes. That's satanic twisting of Scripture. Um, the 24 elders are not souls. You know how you know that? Because it doesn't say that they're souls. He sees them. John sees 24 elders. He doesn't say that they're souls. But then later he sees souls and he says they are souls. I know that's really difficult to get for some of the posties out there, you know. But please try not to add to Scripture, okay? That gets you in big trouble with the Lord. Which if you're lost and you're a postie, well, you don't care about getting in trouble with the Lord. But um, there are men in heaven, in other words, before the first seal is open. And they're not souls. Verse 4, And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. Who opens the book? Oh, that would be the Lamb of the tribe of Judah. Who is that? Jesus. Excuse me, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Okay, thinking about the Lamb. You know, Lamb and the Lion there. <laughs> you know, Jesus. Jesus is the one that opens the seals. Go to Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. 
And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given him, given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. All right. And you can go down through the rest of them there. He's opening the seals. And he's not opening the seals and looking to see what happens. He's opening the seals and saying, there. You know, and I don't believe it's, you know, a scroll either. I think it's a book. You know, it's a book that's seen there in Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. And so he opens the book and releases whatever the, the judgment is there. It's God's wrath. It's God's judgment. Say, so how do you know that? Glad you asked. Zephaniah 3. Go back to the Old Testament. One of the minor prophets. I try to stay on top of these little uh, heretic, uh, you know, posties and all their little crazy arguments against the rapture, preacher rapture. I I'll always want to say that so people know what I'm talking about, but it's actually the catching away before the time of Jacob's trouble. But I try to stay on top of a lot of these arguments because, you know, it confuses people and whatever else. Um, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Who is going to be behind the Antichrist kingdom? You say Satan, okay? Who controls Satan? The Lord. The Lord is the one who's going to send out the Antichrist. Why? We just read about it. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation. Um, I think you could call indignation wrath. And how does it start? With the gathering of the nations. Um, the white horse rider, the Antichrist, going out conquering and to conquer. Why is he conquering and conquering? Or going out conquer, to conquer? Conquering and to conquer? Say it that way. Why is he going out and doing that? To just conquer the nations and let them have their own thing? No, he's going out there to conquer the nations, to bring the nations together. New world order. You understand? But Zephaniah 3.8 says, It's the Lord. My determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine in indignation. So, oh, Jesus is up in heaven. It's, it's The devil is the one who's doing the seals, the events down there. Jesus is merely opening up the seals so that we can take a look. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Lord is the one that's doing it up there in heaven. <clears throat> Go to the book of Amos. Another one of the minor prophets. If you're newly saved, you might have some difficulty finding it. Just go back towards the front of the Bible. We'll get to uh, uh, you'll get to Amos and go to chapter what is it three. I'll show you another one that people don't like very much. <clears throat> Amos chapter three verse six. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord hath not done it? What? That's got to be a mistranslation. How could God do evil? Um, well, when people are wicked, and they don't want to repent, um, God's going to do evil. Okay? God's going to punish them. And God will turn a nation over into just total, complete, utter chaos when they turn against Him. God will bring evil upon a Christ-rejecting country, and a country that gets perversion and everything else going. God will bring evil upon them. So um, why would we then be led to believe that this is the way the Lord does things, and he's going to assemble the kingdoms to pour out his indignation upon them. Why would we believe that God has no part in the first couple of seals being opened? Turn back to Revelation chapter 6. I'm going to show you one other argument that they'll use. They'll say, well, the Lord couldn't be for this stuff. Because look at uh, Revelation chapter 6 verse 9. 
And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. They say, well, see, God wouldn't have done that. Really? You don't think God is going to bring judgment on the people that have rejected Jesus Christ? He gives them a chance to get saved. Sure, absolutely. But remember, when the rapture happens, when the catching away of the body of Christ happens, the only people left on earth will be Christ-rejecting sinners. You say, well, there will be some people that went to church. They're Christ-rejecting sinners. Well, some people that never heard, Christ-rejecting sinner. Everybody on earth that's left after the rapture is going to be a Christ-rejecting sinner. And God's going to bring a lot of judgment on people like that. Gives them a chance to get saved. Absolutely. So, would God be behind a thing like this? Yeah, He would. And if you don't know that, if you don't understand that, then that's because you don't understand God. You don't understand God's hatred for sin. So uh, don't fall for this teaching, this very false satanic teaching, that the Lord is not the one who is opening these seals or something like that. The Bible plainly says it's Jesus Christ that opens the seals, the Lamb that was slain, okay? The Lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, it's plainly Jesus Christ that's opening these seals. And it isn't that He's opening them up to see what happens next or something like a good mystery novel or something, you know, he kind of, kind of, you know, peeks into the book and, oh no, you know, that's not it at all. He's opening the seals to pour out his wrath and indignation. So, I just hope that you don't get led astray with the error of these uh, posties with their coming out with all these heretical teachings. So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.